survival situation. But don't take the attitude that it can't happen to you. Being prepared will increase your confidence and it could save your life. If you're not sure about what you need or what to do, take the time to learn. There are excellent resources available on survival techniques. Share your knowledge and skills with others who fly with you. You'll then have the best chance for survival, not only in open water, but in any unfortunate situation. about first aid. Actually, I don't know much about first aid. You see, first aid is something you do to stabilize yourself or someone else until you get professional treatment. Since we don't know when we're going to get rescued or if we're going to get rescued, we have to take care of our medical needs the best way we know how. It's survival medicine, not first aid. What do you mean we might not get rescued? I mean, you gave them a mayday signal, somebody knows we went down, right? How long is this going to take? There are no guarantees that we're going to get rescued in a couple of hours, days, or weeks. So it's up to us to take care of ourselves the best way we can, and that's survival medicine. Nothing reduces our chances of getting rescued more than having an injury. That's why we use techniques of survival medicine to take care of injuries, so that we can put our energies toward more important issues, like building a shelter, signaling for help, and just surviving until help does arrive. Am not going to die out here? Not if you stay calm and be smart. If we use survival medicine to treat our injuries and illnesses first, we can focus on the task of getting rescued, and we are going to get rescued. How do you keep so calm and you like to do all this? I'm trained on all the current treatment methods of survival medicine. I know what it takes to get rescued, and we'll make it out of here alive. I promise you. We're going to start right now. There's a clearing over there about 30 yards. I saw it coming in. We're going to set up camp. 
I'm going to activate this ELT, and hopefully someone will come for us within a matter of hours. Hold Are you okay? You didn't hurt your foot when we landed, did you? Nah, just a few blisters I got running around the lake this weekend. And these shoes I can help. In a survival situation, it's important that we take care of something like that right away. Let's take a look at those blisters. Blisters can cause you a lot of grief if you don't take care of them right away. If you feel your socks or shoe rubbing, you need to stop and take care of that problem immediately. Hand me that uh, stick so I can, uh, I, I can pop this thing open. Oh, no. Yeah. No way. You don't want to drain the fluid. You see, your body creates blisters as a protective reaction over an injury. For this reason, you need to leave the blisters intact. So just protect them with a clean bandage. You definitely want to take care of your feet. You want to make sure that you keep them dry, even if that means stopping what you're doing and airing them out every now and then. Not only are your feet prone to blisters from walking, but you need to be careful of getting blisters on your hands, too. Stop looking at the sun, you're going to go sun blind. I'm okay. I'm not looking at the sun. I'm just looking for a rescue plane. You may not realize it now, but sun blindness can't sneak up on you. You can make it through the day without any trouble, only to be struck with burning, watery eyes, poor vision, and a headache as soon as the sun goes down. When you feel these symptoms, it's too late. You can expect an entire day of painful eyes or even blindness. And then all you can do to protect your eyes from further exposure is to lightly bandage them or stay in your shelter with your eyes shut. You could probably put something cold on them and make them feel better. And my point is, sun blindness will ruin your day. You need all of your senses to get rescued. Otherwise, you're going to sell yourself short. If you're spinning right now, you need to stop looking at the sun. But what happens when it's super bright out here and we don't have any sunglasses? You take a piece of heavy cloth, thin bark, or even a bit of aluminum foil. You just cut or tear a piece about an inch and a half wide by six inches long and out. Out of that, you cut narrow, horizontal slits so they will be centered over each eye. Then you tie the strip over your eyes like a mask. Sure you don't hurt your hands. If your hands get tender, just either stop or use a different grip or just rest a while. You don't want to give yourself blisters. Ooh, I don't like bees. My sister's allergic to bees and she has to carry a special bee sting kit. Now I do know something about this. The first thing to do when you get stung is treat the sting by immediately scraping it, not pulling the stinger away. Because if you pull it, you will squeeze the poison sac and increase the dose of venom. You'd be amazed how many people die in the United States due to stings from bees, wasps, and yellow jackets just because people are allergic to them. Stinging insects actually end up killing more people than snakes do every year. Well, I can handle bees, but I can't handle snakes. Snakes? Snakes? What happens if a snake bites one of us? Well, not all snakes are deadly. But if you get bit by a venomous snake and you can't get medical attention, your best bet is to remain calm and drink plenty of water. If you go rushing around in a panic, that will only increase the circulation of venom in your bloodstream. And the whole movie concept of cutting a hole in your stuff and sucking the venom out is not recommended anymore. Tourniquets are not recommended anymore. But we don't have to worry about that because no one's going to get bit by a snake. What about lizards? Actually, the only venomous lizards you need to worry about are the two species that are found in the North American desert, the Gila monster and the Mexican beetle lizard. And both of those are relatively sluggish and non aggressive. You're not going to get bit as long as you look where you put your hands and feet. And if you do get bitten, just react the same as if it was a snake bite. Don't panic and drink lots of fluids. What happens if I'm bit by a spider or a scorpion? Then what? All spiders and scorpions are poisonous to a certain degree. 
but it would be pretty uncommon for someone to die from these spiders. The only spiders that could really hurt you are the black widow and brown recluse. But again, you're not going to get bitten by these if you just play it smart and stay away from places where these creatures might be. Are you some kind of neat freak or something? It may sound crazy, but it's true. Your chances of getting hurt are decreased when you keep everything in its place and you use your survival tools properly. And it's important that we keep ourselves and our clothes clean. By doing this, we reduce the odds of getting sick. Look, how does it seem like a little priority? It's very important. I can take a hint. Oh, holy spikes, I burned my hands. Quick, we need to cool the burned area. We can't waste any time. We need to get the into some cold water right now. Come on. We need to get that hand into some cold water so we can chill the injury before there's any more damage. If we don't get the temperature of your burn back to normal, the residual heat from your burn will damage even more tissue. Man, I really messed up. Burns are serious, especially out here. There's anything more than a simple first degree burn where the skin is mostly red. Dehydration and infection are likely to occur and in that order. Pain and trauma to the circulatory system near the burn can cause shock. Dehydration is caused by the loss of body fluids in the burned area, meaning you will have to increase your water intake. The loss of skin, along with having favorable conditions for bacteria, was a high threat for infection. And what happens if it gets infected? Infection is almost uncontrollable in a viral situation, but it takes a day or so for the infection to set in. Oh, no. Here, let's take a look. Is it bad? All burns, regardless of severity, are handled in the same way out here. Without sterile conditions and medical gear, we are very limited as to what we can do for a burn out here. Oh. We've already cooled it, now we have to get it clean. That calls for a little soap and water. The trick is not to make matters worse by disrupting the damaged tissue. It is very important to keep the burned area clean and protected. We have to use the most sterile dressing we can find. Lucky for you, we have a medical kit with sterile dressing. Otherwise, we would be trying to boil some of our clothes to use as bandages. Oh, this really hurts. Am I going to be okay? Clean is just going to be a problem you have to deal with. But you're lucky this time. The burn isn't all that bad. Now listen, you're going to have to pay attention to me and remember what I told you. It's life or death out here, and everything you do is going to impact our survival. So if you want to live, you're going to have to get smart in a hurry. There are no second chances out here. Right. Sorry. So what you have a slight fever. Oh, great. Now I'm getting sick. Fever is simply a symptom of another problem, maybe even dehydration. In your case, it's a symptom of your burn. So there's nothing to worry about? I didn't say that. A fever can be a problem. So what can we do for it? The best thing we can do for it is to take aspirin according to the directions and drink plenty of water. Here, take these. This should help ease your pain and control the swelling. Don't worry, you're going to be all right. Don't be embarrassed. Diarrhea is common in these situations. 
It can be caused by tension, eating unfamiliar foods, or intestinal infection from contaminated water. But believe me, I understand it's uncomfortable. It can keep you in those bushes all day long. But